Welcome back to Just One Question. And I am delighted today to welcome Alice Chun to Just One Question. She is the CEO of Solite Design. She's an inventor. We're going to find out more about that. A social entrepreneur and that, and a speaker. Um, so uh, let's get right to it. Let's find out her story. Alice, welcome. Thank you for being on Just One Question. How are you? I'm fantastic, and thank you for having me. This is such a pleasure and an honor. Uh, I'm doing great. I just came back from Norway, um, so it's it's actually nice to be back in New York City in a little bit warmer weather. Excellent. Yeah, Norway can be uh, can be chilly. Um, so, uh, well, we're glad you're safely back and and able to talk to us. Uh, so. The reason I uh, I reached out to you and and said yes, please come on the show was because I uh, learned a little bit of your story and it sounds fascinating. So, can you please just tell us a bit of your uh, of your journey and and uh, especially that how you invented the the uh, the object, let's say that that kicked this off and and why you think it caught everybody's uh, attention in the way that it did. Okay. Well, uh, I I never planned on becoming a social entrepreneur or a businesswoman, but I was a teacher. I was a professor in architecture at Columbia University, and I began to focus on solar energy in particular after my son was born with asthma. And we would go to the doctor's office all the time. There were so many kids with asthma, and this was a significantly higher number than when I was a kid or um, when you were a child. And I did my research. You know, there's a saying, a uh, worried mom does better research than the FBI. <laughs> well, yeah. that was me. Uh -huh. And, you know, because of my, you know, my teaching background, I realized there was one out of four kids in New York that had asthma. Uh, due to the air quality, the pollution in the air, where mm. 75% of the pollution comes from buildings, not the cars, through HVAC, lighting, power consumption, <clears throat> and um, energy consumption of buildings. So that's when I decided to focus on solar energy in hopes to, to make a difference in terms of getting away from fossil fuels. And Early on, um, I was, I'm a sewer. My mom taught me how to sew. She also taught me origami when I was little. I'm Korean. Um, it's, it's a pastime that a lot of kids do in terms of origami, um, folding paper and making objects. And, um, uh, being a material specialist, I started to sew solar panels to thin film substrates and fabric early on to get, the lighter technology into um, combine it with solar mm -hmm. uh, capabilities. And then when teaching at Columbia, the Haiti earthquake happened. And this was after many different natural disasters, huge natural disasters happening, reoccurring um, and at um, horrible, you know, ramifications. So at that point I said, let's try to help and do something to help in this case. And I switched my studio around in Columbia to be an innovation studio to help Haiti. And that's when we realized that Haiti was really a microcosm of what was happening globally, where the majority of the population live without access to infrastructure and power. Um, only 5% of the country was electrified and people were using kerosene to light their world at night and living in extreme poverty, they were spending up to 30% of their income on kerosene, which is a deadly toxic fuel that kills um, 2 million children every year because of the, the toxins in the air. And I researched every solar light out there on the market. They were all heavy, hard plastic, bulky, and using origami, which is a collapsible folding technique with paper, I based my design on a new type of solar lamp based on the origami balloon. And it flat packs, it basically looks like this. It's very flat. And then um, 
there's a solar panel and it pops open into a beautiful cube. And this one in particular has six different colors. Mm. Wow. <laughs> I'm going in and out. Of I love it that you're disappearing with these magical colors. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Coming back again. <laughs> so and, that's amazing. You know, and basically, this is sailcloth material, which is engineered for extreme weather. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, so we have a number of products that are like this mm -hmm. in our in our store. And when I first made my first prototype, I went to Haiti. I was invited to a tech conference mm. to help Haiti. Um, and in walks Bill Clinton and the president of Haiti, and I showed him my glued up, taped up um, prototype in 2010. Mm -hmm. And they were kind of blown away. Bill came up to me and said, what? This is this is amazing. Come over here. Come, <laughs> come look at this. I lock I lock this lot. Show them what this is. And um, and. I was, you know, surprised and delighted and excited. Mm. And um, mm. it it pushed me to move forward with bringing this to manufacturing and into market. Um, fast forward seven years, uh, Hurricane Maria happened in Puerto Rico. Mm. And by that time, we were able to send over 100,000 lights to Puerto Rico to all of the victims that were powerless um because of the hurricane and since then we've impacted helped communities from all over the world from nepal's earthquake to um ukraine uh just last year i delivered lights to um ukraine turkey after the earthquake uh mm -hmm. to acapulco after hurricane otis um, and to Maui because of the fires that were happening in Maui. Mm -hmm. And so we've been able to impact over a million lives worldwide in our humanitarian mission. And um, because of our ability to help in Puerto Rico, I was invited again by the Clinton Foundation. And backstage, I met Hillary Clinton and I had maybe three minutes to talk to her. And I knew, you know, we had a common bond in terms of helping children. Mm -hmm. And I told her that I had just come back from Dominica and delivered our lights to seven different schools because, you know, children need to read and do homework at night and mm -hmm. they didn't have any power. Um, and I told her the story of Light Warriors, which is me kind of instead of just giving the light away, it's important for me to, to share the narrative of why, why this light is so important. And I tell them my story, which is when I was little, I was, I was beat up a lot because I looked different than the other kids. I, I was mm. the only Asian in my school mm. and I decided to fight, but I didn't fight with my fists. I fought with my my heart and the light of my mind. And I tell the kids that you also have this light that is in your heart and your mind. Mm -hmm. And the sun is the most powerful source of energy that comes to the earth every day. But the light of your heart and your mind is even more powerful than the sun. Mm -hmm. And now that you have this light, you are a light warrior, which means that you fight with this light inside you and no matter where you go in the world just like the sun this light is always with you and you must let the sun kiss this face every day which is the solar panel so that it gains the energy of the sun and you can use this light for your homework to read so that your dreams and ambitions can grow and light warriors never ever give up that's a very important thing that i try to tell them that no matter what circumstances you're in, you can always fight with this light inside you and you can overcome anything. And so this is a very powerful message that I, I give to children all over the world, wherever I can, because it, it touches them in a way that makes them 
understand, first of all, the power of the sun and that this is a lamp that is completely powered by you and mm -hmm. your uh, ability to give it sun, but also that it, it's an emblem of empowering yourselves to do whatever your dreams and aspirations may be. And I told this to Hillary and she's like, oh my God, Alice, that's such a great story. <laughs> oh my. And I love that story. I want to be a light warrior too. <laughs> and she said, by the way, Chelsea and I are doing a book called Gutsy Women. And mm. I'd like you to be part of this book. And of course, I'm just, I'm looking behind me thinking, you know, is she talking to somebody else or, <laughs> you know, I have this vortex moment where, mm -hmm. um, wow. And so, of course, I said, hell yeah. And, um, you know, a year later, and it was funny because I came back and I said, oh my gosh, you know, this happened. And everyone told me that, you know, Hillary's a liar. She's a politician. All politicians lie. But mm. a year later, I ended up in this book between Jane Goodall and Greta Thunberg. Wow, um, that's good company. <laughs> I, I couldn't, you know, I was so, I'm so blessed and and grateful for that opportunity. And then over the pandemic, um, I heard that she was doing a docu-series on Apple TV and we talked again and she ended up putting me in her docu-series as well. And that came out in 2000, I think it was 2020 or yeah, 2021. Um, and it was something that, um, you know, 30, I, I live in Manhattan. I, I live in a very small apartment and 30, 30 people descended on me, including the um, Secret Service <laughs> and, and the camera crew and the lighting crew. And and um, Hillary and Chelsea spent about a good four hours in, in my tiny apartment with me filming that. And through, you know, my my efforts and trying to invent things that will help people and, and make lives better. Um, this past year, I was, because of the gutsy uh, episode, someone from Bob Iger's um, team, this is before, this is after he left Disney and before mm. he went back to Disney, Okay, they, mm. they contacted me and, and said that um, they saw me on, Gutsy and on Apple TV, and that I um, did an interview where I did mention his book, which I loved his book, which is um, Bob Iger, Right of a Lifetime. And, and I ended up having a, a call with Bob Iger. And at that time, the war broke out in Ukraine. And I heard that the children were going through horrible PTSD from the traumas of you know, I, I met children that witnessed 12 of their family members shot and killed. I, I met children with their arms and legs amputated because of shrapnel and bombings. Um, and so and they were having blackouts. Uh, the Russians were taking out all the power stations and in the hospitals, the children. I, I had a friend that was working in one of the children's hospitals in Ukraine, and she said that it was taking hours for the nurses to calm the children down when there were blackouts. And they weren't able to sleep at night. And then I remembered that um, this this light, which has a different colors, they were used for PTSD therapy in children after Hurricane Maria, and it helped them sleep. Um, there's a lot of new technology in terms of LED color therapy, where it calms the synapses of your brain and, and relaxes stress and anxiety, enhances mood. And it helped the children so much that I just that's when I decided I'm going to Ukraine to deliver lights personally to these kids in the hospitals. And I told this story to Bob Iger, and he actually helped me really? in terms of um, getting over there and 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 funding um, mm -hmm. part of my trip. So I I went to, you know, I had four huge pieces of luggage filled with thousand 
thousands of my lights and uh, I went by myself. I flew into Krakow and then had to take a train to the border because there weren't any, there aren't any flights going into Ukraine and then did, did the border crossing by myself and eventually made it to uh, Kiev and visited overall like three different children's hospitals and two refugee camps. And that's when I met the team from Good Morning America, and they did a story on on my trip. So that was pretty phenomenal. But it was more important for me was that I was able to really deliver these lights to so many children that needed a little light in their lives or something mm. brighter in their lives, literally, Absolutely. literally, yeah. because yeah. the hospital lights are so harsh and so mm. bright that um now all the children are using these as night lights and and they love them and i tell you when i when i gave them a couple of them my lights it's you know this one little boy had a broken leg and he was only two years old and he was limping and running to me and i gave him a light and he was so happy and delighted and laughing and then i saw him run away limping a few minutes later i see him running and limping towards me and he has he's grabbed his friend and he's dragging his friend to me and he says give my friend a light too and i was just struck with how how generous and kind and um full of full of um forgiveness that i saw in these kids and you know you wouldn't blame these kids for feeling hate or resentment, but it was the opposite. They were so resilient and inspiring. Um, it was it was well worth all of the uh, all of the trouble and the pain of of traveling there to to finally meet these kids and give them our light. Fantastic, Alice. Uh, it's such a moving story, uh, and several chapters uh, of this uh, wonderful story. So thank you for sharing. Um, yeah, I think we're just going to, we're going to leave it there. That's a, a beautiful story. And I appreciate un especially your insight in connecting the technology with the story because it's stories that give meaning. And that's what, that's what uh, those kids need is the meaning to attach to it so that it becomes a powerful beacon of hope as well as, absolutely Just simply light so that's that's beautiful and what a profound insight so um thank you for being on just one question thank you for having me. such a pleasure <laughs>